So I've brought the cameras with Preston Innovations here today because I've got two absolutely huge feeder finals coming up. For me, there is two major feeder events of the year, the Feeder Masters final and the Feeder King final. They are two massive events, Preston Innovations Feeder Masters, Newfish Feeder King. They are the two big feeder events for me because they are mostly focused around um, the type of feeder fishing that I do on the international stage. Less sort of methody style fishing and more um, bream, skimmers, roach, whatever it might be, with a longer hook length. And for me, that makes them two really important competitions in my calendar. And I love fishing them. I'm here at Southfield today, it's a good venue, it's a bit steadier. You're probably looking for five to 10 fish to do well, any more than that, and you're really on a winner. And then you've got Upper Tamar Res, where the Preston Innovations Feeder Masters final is held. And down there, uh, you're looking for more fish. You're looking for 40 or 50 skimmers maybe to win the event. So, you know, different types of fishing, but I can't come here, I can't sort of come out and go, yeah, I'm gonna practice my feeder fishing if you like. I do a lot of feeder fishing, so it's not really like I need to practice, but what I like to do before I'm heading to an important event, and your important event might be, you know, an event you've got here at Southfield or an event you're having, you know, down somewhere else or whatever it might be, I just like to get my gear out on the bank if I can and almost have a day just familiarizing myself where everything goes, my setup, make sure I've got everything. Because when I'm actually down there, I just want to concentrate on the fishing itself. I don't really want to be distracted by not having the, the right rod rest or the right rods or whatever it might be. So I'm just going to run you through a little bit of my prep for these two finals. I think, first of all, you have to think about the rods, okay? So for me, I like to cover various distances with my rods. Southfield's a great example probably not going to fish any further than about 60 meters so i need to cover sort of 15 to 60 meters they're the distances i need to cover so i'm going to have for example a 10 foot superior sl that's going to cover me for the shorter distances in the mid range anything from about anything over 20 up to about 45 i absolutely love this 11 4 ascension for me it's one of the most beautiful rods People might say, why not the 11 foot Superior X? I love the 11 foot Superior X. It's a brilliant rod. It, it, it certainly could do the same job, but I love this Ascension. For me, it was all designed for these sort of smaller skimmers and bream and those type of fish. It wasn't designed for, um, you know, slightly bigger fish. Superior X, I think, has got a brilliant action and I can catch the small fish on it. But if I was catching more proper bream or carp f1s those sorts of things i'd probably go with the 11 foot superior x but for me this 11 4 ascension is amazing and then i shall take some 12 foot superior x's and that's going to cover me anything over 45 meters that's going to be the rod out of the bag so i only need three rods i don't need sort of different rods and i tend to take two of each so when i go down to the final i'll have two 10 foot sls two 11 4 ascensions and two 12 foot superior x's so i've got those with me in my bag today right sorted covered me for Southfield and for um, Tamar Perfect. That means I've got to marry those up with some reels. Always the extremities for me, so get them out, clean them up, just make sure that everything's okay with them. They never let me down, so I don't tend to check if they're working because they've never not worked. So I just clean them up and check the braid on them. I've got 010 Absolute Feeder Braid. Is it okay? How long's it been on there? Is everything all right with that? With that? So I don't have to, again, mess around, check my tips, check a few spare tips. Everything is, is right. I don't have to worry about my rods and reels. I can turn up and just start fishing. Things like changing my shock leaders and stuff like that. I'm gonna do that on the eve of the match. I'm gonna put the shock leaders on. So I'm not really looking to do that today. I just need to make sure that when I go to get ready on Friday night for an hour or so, that everything has its place and everything's ready so i'm not faffing around oh where are my rods where's my reels oh no i need new braid none of that don't need any of that that's absolutely essential and then obviously i'm going to check through things like rod rests and butt rests have i got my butt rest with me personally i like to take two only because i think oh, i'd be lost without it if i dropped it in so i have a couple of butt rests here i absolutely love these uh, connection for a butt rest you can see i use it at the tip as well tip and butt rest Whenever I'm locked in, have I got my rod rest with me? Again, I usually take 
two, I take like a short and a medium. I only do it just in case something happens, if I drop it in. You know, if you're going away for three or four days, or I've got a big event, I don't want to not have it, so I've got everything there ready. And I've got my flat rod rest as well. So when I'm at Tamar, I'll be fishing with the flat rod rest. For me, that's a really crucial piece of equipment. So I've got my nice flat rod rest. I've got my um, U-rest for locking it in here at Southfield, so I'm all covered. Just check that I've got my arms here, look on my box. So it means I can put my side trays on. I've left this side tray off today so you guys can see me, but usually I'd have another side tray on here, rig roost, make sure that's all there. That's in my bag, ready to go. Moving over to my side tray. Have I got my nice big side tray? Yes, need that. Checking my bait tubs out. These new sieve tubs are absolutely amazing. You can see I've got my worms in here. It's really warm today. These worms are absolutely fine. Just the like the bits of soil and that have come to the top so I can just clear those off if I need to and pick the neat worms out. But to be honest, I like to leave them on there while the worms are there. I just literally brush it to the side and then I can pick a nice, neat blob of worms up if I need to. So they're brilliant for keeping my worms. Couple of those to hand. And of course the little sieve tub, which has got my chop worms in. And I can just pop my chop worms in there and they come through the mesh nicely. Obviously I need to carry some a really reliable pair of worm scissors. These new worm scissors are amazing. Ridged edges, don't go blunt. Can destroy my worms and get them in a nice condition for fishing in my pot. Again, I'm a little bit, <laughs> I would be lost without these scissors and it's very easy to misplace something on the bank. So I carry two pairs of the scissors. I think that's really important myself. Again, I, those sort of items, I don't want any less. I don't, you know, I really would be scuppered without them. Got my superior EVA bowls. I take three or four of these for the different ground baits and my little tubs for the water. There you can see. So again, I can, pack, I can clean all this up today pack it all away knowing I've got everything that I need there. I've got all the, the right things ready. So again, I don't have to try and sort all that out the evening before. And then of course, I need to think about feeders. Now, some people, they love to just go, ah, this is all my feeders and they pile all the feeders down, they bring them all down, the box tips over on the platform. You know, uh, it all depends who you are as an angler, right? Some people like one tub with a few feeders in. Personally, I've been using these little small Preston um, tubs for like, almost like I'm going to say my, let's say a specialist feeder for the venue. So see if I can find an example. So in here, I've got in here with me some, the hex mesh rockets. So I've got a selection of hex mesh rockets in here from small to large, from 20 to 40 gram. I don't envisage anything more than that when I'm coming here. Um, and again, I can just keep, keep like three of each size in here. So I'll have three of each size. I don't, want to, I don't want to go nuts. I'm not really bothered. If I'm going away for the Feeder Masters final, I'll probably take something like this. And I'd probably put four or five of each size in there. Don't want to lose a couple of feeders on the practice match and then not have any feeders for the match. So it all depends where you're going. Southfield Feeder Kings are one day final. I'll probably just use one of these little EVAs with my selection of feeders, each type of feeder in. And it helps me pick them out quick as well. I go, oh, I need a hex mesh. Go to my little hex mesh tub. This one's got the window feeders in. So if I open that up there, look, you can see the window feeders in. I can, again, I can just go, right, which window feeders do I need? Pick out the window feeders that I need. Not loads, but just make sure I'm covered. But if I'm going away for three or four days, I shall get a bigger container and put, say, four or five of each size and feeder in. This one's got the wire mesh feeders in here. If I just show you those. Look, there's the wire mesh feeders. They're all great. All different sizes, some bait up feeders in there as well. What I don't want to do is put all of these feeders from the little tubs into this one big tub. Because what happens is you get a little bit lost and I'm very proactive changing my feeder. So when I'm fishing, I like to go, right, let's try a hex mesh. Let's try a window feeder. Let's try a wire mesh. I like to mix it up all the time. And what happens is if you've got all your feeders stuffed in one tub, you're like this rooting through and it makes you reluctant to change. Whereas if you've got your feeders like, right, these are my wire feeders. There's, I can literally go, right, I want to try a wire feeder. Pick my wire feeders up. Ah, oh, there's a four square, 20 gram. Pick that up, no problem, off I go. 
So it's a nice little way of organising your feeders in those EVA bowls. I've tried sort of bigger boxes and often you can't get enough feeders in each one. So it just seems better to have something like this where I can just lay them all out. Yep, yeah, that's what I need. If I lose one, I can just top it up and it just means that they're all nicely organised. Of course, the other type of feeders I'll use are the flatbed style feeders. I've got a few out here for you. So anything under 20 metres. So when I go down to Tamar, they are the sort of feeders I'll be using. A, a, a sort of a micro, a small, a medium, three square, five square, got some four square wires, got the hex mesh one as well. So again, all these feeders pr provide different bait options. If I nip this ground bait in the solid feeder like that, that's going to get down to the bottom without releasing any ground bait. If I put the feeder in this feeder, for example, you can see there, bits are going to break off it the whole way down. They do a completely different thing as they sink through the water. So I need the flexibility. I need to have these options with me. This is a big final after all. This is an important match. Changing the feeder types will catch me more fish. I have got no idea what the best feeder is at the moment. I can tell you when I won the Feeder Masters the second time, this was the feeder I used. I, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. I put it on and it was like turning the light on. It, I, I was using this style of feeder and it was nice, it, but as soon as I put that on, it was almost like it was more open. I think it was creating a bit more of a cloud. It just, it just turned my peg completely and utterly. So that was quite interesting as well. So if I hadn't have had those with me, if I hadn't have had that selection of feeders with me, I don't really know what, you know, I wouldn't have won because I couldn't have changed to the right feeder at the right time. So having those little, having that organisation is important. Now, the final aspect of preparation has to be hook lengths. I'm going to wind my, uh, wind my rod in and just remind everybody, I think you've all seen this feeder rig before, <clears throat> but I'm continually always looking for like any improvements that I can. So I'm going to wind this in. My feeder rig is really simple. Anything up to about 25 meters, all I do is put two rubber stops on my main line, slide them up, and then attach a short hook length below. Today, this is 40 meters. So what I've done is I've actually water knotted on a piece of the O22 Preston fluorocarbon. So the stops themselves can sit behind the knot. So they're not gonna slip. And then I've just literally put a small knot in the line at the bottom and I can loop my hook length behind it like a Dacron connector on your pole. <clears throat> and I carry with me a selection of six inch hook length boxes. So I'll just show you them now. So my six inch hook length boxes are in this plastic um, EVA container. And you can see there I've got a selection of different ones and they've all got different things in. For practicing, and for just trying to get a bit of time on the bank, I love a pre-tied hook. So N20s are a hook that I use nearly all the time. If I was telling you one hook for Southfield and Tamar, it would be an N20. And the 16s are on 011, the 14s come pre-tied on 012. Now, during the match, I'll probably use 014, something a little bit more robust. Um, so I'll tie my own for that, but practicing, I will literally just go into my um, container here and I've got, look, N20s all ready to go. I've ta I, all I do is double them up. I take them off the pre-tied sticks and double them up. And I've got some N10s here as well. So the beauty is for spending a bit of time, I'm almost using, I call them like a sacrificial hook length. I'm using a hook length that I think, yeah, I can use these. I can't tie a better knot than this. The knots are brilliant. Everything's amazing. But it, it, I've only got one size of line in each size, if that makes sense. So because I've only got one size of line, I don't want to, um, I like more variety in my general hook boxes, which is why I use the pre-tied in the size they come in, and then I add additional sizes in. But I always carry this pre-tied box with me because it's really quick and easy to use. So having the hook lengths there ready, check your hook lengths. Are they all full to the brim? Are they all up to date? Yes. When they're all full and up to date, you know you can go on those events being fully ready because if you want to do well on whatever event it is, if you've got everything ready to hand and it's going to work in the right way, then you're going to take some beating.